The Federal Bureau of Prisons is responsible for housing some of the most dangerous individuals the world has ever seen. It was created at a time when crime was spiking and the infamous bank robbers of the 1930s were striking fear in every bank employee across the country. What do you know about the Federal Bureau of Prisons and its beginnings in America? Let's take a look. On May 14, 1930, Congress established the Bureau of Prisons within the Department of Justice. The agency was tasked with the management and regulation of all federal, penal, and correctional institutions. Prior to this act, there were most certainly prisons that held offenders convicted of federal crimes. The wardens acted almost autonomously, and officials in Washington, D.C. only offered nominal direction. The Three Prisons Act of 1891 led to the building of three of the most famous federal prisons to ever exist, USP Leavenworth, USP Atlanta, and USP McNeil Island. Prior to the construction of Leavenworth, federal prisons were held at state prisons across the country. The construction of Leavenworth was done by inmates. The warden, James French, would march the inmates each day to their Work site. Throughout the early 1900s, there was much development and change in the agency due to the growing threat of crime across the country. The first director of the prisons was Sanford Bates. Bates was in charge of the prison system in Massachusetts before assuming his role with the federal government. In 1930, the federal government had 14 institutions, housing 13,000 inmates. In 1932, another penitentiary opened, USP Lewisburg. This prison remains open to this day. By 1940, that number had nearly doubled with 24 institutions housing over 24,000 inmates. Over the next 80 years, the population would grow to what it is today. As of October 2022, the Bureau had a total of 158,974 inmates with 122 facilities housing them. 93% of all inmates are male. In 2022, a whopping 45.2% of all inmates were housed for drug offenses. The second most prevalent offense are for weapons and explosives. Many times, the federal government will pick up a state case if the accused has prior firearm convictions. Over 25% of all offenders in the federal system are serving a 5-10 to 10 year sentence, while only 2.5% are serving a life sentence. The average age of a federal inmate is 36. Many don't realize that juveniles sometimes commit federal offenses and require housing. The federal government will typically contract with local facilities to house any juveniles under federal custody. Another less known aspect is crime on Indian reservations. Those offenders are under federal jurisdiction and complete their sentences in federal prison. Women are housed in 27 facilities across the country. They account for 7% of the total population, or just over 10,000. FMC Carswell houses the highest security females. The Federal Bureau of Prisons has five security levels. Federal prison camps are minimum security facilities. They often lack fencing and have a low staff-to-inmate ratio. Prison camps, such as FPC Duluth, focus on work programs. The next level is low-security federal correctional institutions. They have dormitory or cubicle-style housing. The staff-to-inmate ratio remains lower, but higher than the federal prison camps. An example of a low-security federal correctional institution is FCI Latuna. Our next level is medium-security federal correctional institutions. They have strengthened perimeters with double fences and electronic detection systems. These federal correctional institutions have mostly cell-type housing. An example of a medium security prison would be FCI Manchester. The high security offenders are housed at United States penitentiaries. The worst offenders in the system are sent to these facilities. They have highly secured perimeters with walls and reinforced fencing. Some United States penitentiaries also house medium security inmates. United States penitentiaries feature cell housing with high staff to inmate ratio and a close control of all inmate movement. An example of a United States penitentiary is USP Thompson. When locations feature multiple facilities, they are classified as a federal correctional complex. FCC Terre Haute is an example of this. On the premises, they have FCI Terre Haute and USP Terre Haute. Speaking of USP Terre Haute, it also houses death row for the federal government. There are over 40 men on death row at the facility, with the last execution taking place in 2020. COVID-19 took a harsh toll on federal facilities. There were reportedly 99 federal inmate deaths due to COVID-19, with two staff also losing their life. 
1987, parole was abolished as part of a push to be harder on crime. Inmates were then required to serve 85% of their time. Additional crime bills were passed in the 90s. This resulted in the population of federal prisons exploding. The current trend is downward, especially with marijuana-related offenses possibly being commuted. We have now briefly explored the Federal Bureau of Prisons. There is much more to the system and we have just touched the surface. Check out my other federal prison profiles. Let me know in the comments if there is a prison you would like to see profiled. If you enjoy this content, like and subscribe. As always, see you next time.